So you want to run ethical hacking and penetration testing, you are at the right channel. Today we're going to go over Nmap and most importantly, one of the main skills of penetration testing, which is active reconnaissance. We're going to pinpoint what it is, how it works, and some of the main mistakes I see guys nowadays are doing. So take a nice seat and let's go with what is active reconnaissance. Active reconnaissance is the process of obtaining information about our victim which can be then used into crafting real attacks. This information may include anything from open ports, running services, web application endpoints, or even talking with someone in order to obtain details in real time. The reason why it's called active is because each of our actions, no matter which one they are, they are resulting in some form of traffic to our target. So in a nutshell, they can see or can know that they have been scanned in real time especially when they are watching the log files. Now, this leads us to our main question, and that is, what is Nmap? So, Nmap is a tool, and I'm going to repeat that once again because it's super important. It's just a tool that can do only one aspect of this active reconnaissance phase. And this aspect, in this case, is port scanning and service discovery. Essentially, Nmap uses network packets, which have been sent and received, and during this phase, they can discuss information whether or not specific port is open and if so what possible service is this port hosting okay so but how does it work if you do the nmap or you do man nmap you're gonna see a lot of options and while nmap is huge because it is a super highly customizable tool with a lot of options which are quite useful nmap uses one i can say simple manner to combine all the things you see here in the options in this manner is the base of port scanning and network communication. So imagine you have two machines, PC1 and PC2. And essentially, in the networking phase of the things, one machine should be used as a client and another machine should be used as a server because two clients cannot really communicate, there's nothing to be shared, and two servers, they can just host stuff and no one's gonna share anything at all. So in the best case scenario, you have a client-side machine which most of the time is your Kali, and you have a server-side machine, which can be a vulnerable server, a CTF machine on hack the box or try hack me, or just a real server during penetration testing. So you have these two machines, and you want to understand what ports have been open on your target. So imagine you are on PC1. How does Nmap work? It's quite simple. Nmap uses a whoop, and during this whoop, it sends specific packet based on what option you specify here. And all this packet says, is that port open? Can I communicate to this port? Can this packet reach this port of your system? Then the PC2 responds with something like yes, no, or filtrated. So as, so as soon as you see filtrated, that means that the machine is behind a firewall and Nmap cannot distinguish between open and closed, so that's why it says filtrated. So in the best case scenario, you see either yes, it's open, or no, it's closed. And then in the last step, based on your options once again, if you see the port to be open, then Nmap can issue more scans and instantiate and create more packets in order to obtain more detailed information about the open port itself. For example, what service is running there, what version of the service, can I do FTP anonymous login if the FTP service is there? Can I banner grab the HTTP server? And all these things that are available when you do things like nmap minus sc and minus sv, but more on that later. Okay, so how do I conduct nmap scans? Usually, I have my target as an IP address or in form of a hostname. 192.168.0.147, I believe. And that is my 142, sorry, that's my B-Box machine up and running. Bbox is quite nice for such cases and for learning purposes because it's vulnerable to a lot of stuff that you can test. So essentially on my Kali machine, the thing I'm going to do first is run a simple Nmap scan without specifying any other option rather than a port scan and then do minus VV in order to get more verbose output. One more super nice trick that I can tell you guys is that as soon as you run Nmap scan, always always output your scan into some kind of a file. So in that case, I'm going to call the file nmap bbox or ports.txt. And also please give a meaningful name to your scans. When I run that, 
first you're gonna see all the ports the current service has the current host of it and then on the next hand side you're gonna save that into a file so if in some point in future big network configuration is changed or the service is down you can at least, at least know what was on that specific server and you have a snapshot of the nmap scan at that specific point so now the nmap scan is finished and you may ask okay i but why did you do it like that because now we can see the open ports but we don't have any details about them and the reason is quite simple i'm gonna pause the video just to say massive massive thanks to my patreon sponsors you have no idea how much that means to me if you also have further appreciation to my work don't hesitate to become a patreon there you're gonna get access to a lot of tools including shadowburn my private packer currently evading avis and idiars found my mythic situ agent completely in powershell and five and six more projects which i think you're gonna find handy thank you so much and moving on and i always use a port scan to all ports just to see all the available open ports on a specific system when i do that i run second nmap scan which is going to give me more details about each and every port by using the options minus sc and minus sv so i'm gonna first run the port scan and then i'm gonna explain what these options are in order to save time here i need to specify all of the ports which was previously found so in that case i'm gonna open the terminal i'm gonna do echo minus n specify my open ports cut them with the delimiter of slash and then format one to give me the port format I'm going to redirect that to ports. I'm going to vim ports. And using a simple vim snippet, I can just replace the new line with a comma, which is going to give me the nice little syntax that Nmap can use. So that's a nice vim trick, which actually helped me to be more time efficient. And instead of manually typing all the ports, I can just do that, paste it, and it's good to go. I'm going to now rename the file, which is going to be Nmap bbox full scan and I run that here now let me explain why i did that so the reason i do two nmap scan is first because i'm gonna save time and second because i'm gonna save network traffic so the first scan is just to map out all the available ports i have on my targeted system and the second nmap scan is to dig deeper into each and every port and get more details using sv and sc parameters now what do these parameters do Minus SV is the parameter which is used for enumerating software versions. So this parameter is used for identifying the services on specific ports and these services, what version they can hold, and so on. So essentially, these are all this service discovery part. On the next hand side, we have the minus SC, which is for default scripts. So you see, Nmap has its own scripting languages, which is called NSC. The scripting language allows us to perform different actions on specific services when they are found. So essentially, if you find an FTP service and Nmap has the ability to try anonymous login, which at the end can detect on the Nmap level if you can go login it anonymously and actually read all the files if you can. So this is just one example of default script of Nmap scripts. And essentially, when you specify the minus SC, Nmap is gonna run its default scripts for each service it finds in order to get more details probe it in order if it's exploitable in some form or even extract even more details about it okay so now the nmap scan is finished and now let's analyze the results here we have indeed a lot of ports and not for all of them nmap was able to give us enough details but for most of them it does so i'm gonna start from the very very beginning and explain the output step by step so essentially the first one you see is ftp and as I just mentioned before, Nmap was able to see its version, which in that case is ProFTPD131, and also Nmap was able to detect that we can do anonymous login and that we can list these specific files and most likely get them. On the next part, Nmap was able to, decide to see the OpenSSH service, SMTP service, we have various web services which Nmap was able to disclose its services, its versions, and so on, and the process continues until it finds a service which Nmap cannot see which, which it is or, or doesn't know it. In that case, 
Nmap gives us a fingerprint, which works like that. And this fingerprint can then be used and published to the Nmap database. And essentially when you do so, now this server is going to be known in the future of scans. So Nmap is not just a tool, it's a community driven tool. So as soon as someone sees a signature, they can upload it to the Nmap and then the Nmap database is going to be uploaded and this service is not going to be unknown anymore. Now, while Nmap is great and it has a lot of options, like it can be used for firewall evasions, it has option for determining the packet size, the packet type, the packet protocol, and so on and so on and so on. While Nmap is great, I'm not saying anything else, it is not the only thing that can do the job. It's not the only tool that can see if a port is open, and it's not the only tool that can be used for network and service enumeration. So that's the main issue I see nowadays in guys, that they are using and relying only on tools and not on techniques. But when you want to learn penetration testing, when you want to become better, and when you want to learn something else, you have to think not about the tools, but about the techniques and what does the tools do. In this case, it was super easy. Nmap is doing port enumeration and service discovery. How it does that, once again, sends a packet, gets the packet back, based on the packet details and the response, it sees if the port is open. Okay, but do not depend on your Nmap because a lot more tools can do that. When you want to learn penetration testing, make yourself a nice methodology, make yourself a nice procedure, and make yourself a nice fundamental knowledge about the core principles of penetration testing, one of which is just reconnaissance, and that's only one of these principles. While Nmap is super handy and useful, it helps us with only one of these aspects of the penetration testing. And even though it's nice, that's not the only tool that can do the work, so we must not depend only on specific tool for our needs. I've seen guys using Mascat. I've seen guys using Netcat. In, in matter of fact, the CTF players who are getting for the first bot, they are always using Mascan because Mascan is more times faster than Nmap. So based on your needs, based on your project, based on your learning purpose, you have to make sure that you can adapt into different tools rather than staying on just one and then failing as when the tool fails. With that being said, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Even though Nmap is a complex tool, it has a lot of steps. I think I've showcased the basic and as mentioned, don't focus that much on the tool, but focus on the technique behind it. If you think this video was useful, drop a thumbs up button, make sure to click that subscribe button which helps my channel so much, and also you can join my free Discord channel where we share experience and knowledge, which you are welcome to. Thanks so much and moving on. See you to the next one. Bye.